Hello crafty friends, this is Jess and welcome to a video on the scrapbook.com YouTube channel. I am thrilled to be sharing a card example for you today with the new Tim Holtz and Sizzix release for Christmas 2021. This elegant Christmas die is perfect for your clean and simple cards or elegant and more intricate cards as well. And I'm going to show you an example of a card you can make very quickly using this die set. This set comes with six different dies. Now in those die pieces, there are extra elements. So it's not just six pieces, but you have everything you need to build a beautiful floral collection for your Christmas cards, including pine cones, berries, and different foliage items. I am using some scrapbook.com cardstock here. This is the smooth cardstock, and I'm going through some of my packs, including the boho and Christmas packs to see which colors I want to use and which ones will work best for what I'm going for. I'm selecting some really nice neutral colors and and some sort of muted colors, including greens and browns that I wanna use. Now I do know that I want to add in some distress ink uh, colors so that I can get a little more varied result with my die cuts without having to cut a ton of different pieces of paper. This is a really cool way to stretch your die cuts, especially if you're going to be cutting something that cuts multiple pieces that are supposed to be two different colors, because then you can go in with your distress ink or whatever ink you have and add some texture or color or some shading to some of those pieces to really step up the interest and dimension of your project. The colors I'm using for the ink blending here are Rustic Wilderness and Ground Espresso. And I think they paired very well with the cardstock colors from the scrapbook.com packs. So this was a really good match. Now, once I had my ink blending done, I was ready to start assembling my foliage and really start having this project come together. I used some liquid adhesive. This is a Lawn Fawn glue tube, but you can use whatever you have. I do find something with a fine point or fine tip applicator works best for these smaller pieces. So just keep that in mind when you are going to assemble something that has lots of little pieces or needs a little more attention to detail. Once I got all of that assembled and glued together, I was ready to create a beautiful background for our card. I'm using the Simon Hurley Jewel Heist background stamp. This is a red rubber stamp, and I'm just applying the ink with the Distress Ink Pad directly to the stamp, and then I spritzed it with a little water from the Distress Sprayer. Not a lot of water, you don't need much, just a little bit will do, and then that really helps kind of give a more soft and watercolor sort of effect, and you can see that I'm using the two different colors here, the uh, Walnut stain, I'm sorry, it was ground espresso, the ground espresso and the rustic wilderness. And uh, I'm doing the same thing for both of those, just kind of moving the background around and picking up some, similar to an ink smushing, only you're doing it on a background with an actual image rather than just the ink flowing on the paper. Now I have a ton of backgrounds. I'm only gonna use one of them today, but I can't stand to let the ink go to waste. So I save them in a drawer in my craft room. And when I'm not feeling inspired to create a background, I pull those out and I already have a starting point ready to go. For the background splatter there, I used a few different things. I used the tarnished brass uh, distress spray stain and then I also used a marble black spray ink from Dilutions uh, and I just take the lid off of both of those tap that over top of my project and it works perfectly to create beautiful splatter every time once I got my uh, arrangement of the leaves and the pine cone and the berries all set up the way I wanted it I took out my white acrylic gloss spray and did the same thing tapping over my project to add a little bit of interest to that cluster on my card. I decided I wanted a sentiment, but I didn't want to get out all of my supplies for heat embossing, and so I grabbed my Tim Holtz Big Chat, and I found the perfect words. So I actually had peace and joy in my sticker set here, and I thought that was perfect. It was the perfect touch, so simple and minimalistic, but just elegant at the same time. I really love the way that this came out, and I hope that you do too. Just like that, we are at the end of our card, and all that's left is to attach this to a white A2 size card base and we are finished. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of today's project and if you are inspired to create something like this for your Christmas cards this year.